Welcome back to Local Connection. We're here with our crew embracing the relaxing lifestyle of farm life. What's not relaxing is the intense sport of rowing. We catch up with the teens of the Delta D's Rowing Club. Okay, paddle! These junior rowers may seem experienced, but they haven't been at it for very long. I chose rowing because I wanted to try something new that I'd never done before, and I was looking for a sport that was committed and determined and kind of demanding. So I tried rowing and I really liked it. They come here very focused, they are ready for practice, they are going out on the water, they're pushing each other and helping each other in reaching their goals and supporting each other. And as a result, each one of them are actually reaching those goals and, and getting what they want out of the rowing. One of the rowers, Jake Elward, is well on his way to achieving success. I was just at the Royal Canadian Henley over in St. Catharines, Ontario, and uh, I got 10th overall out of 45 people, and it's like, it's an international event, so there's, there was like a team from Argentina there and from Europe, and it was pretty cool. There are many challenges while rowing, but one in particular seems to be shared by most rowers. It's that mental game that you have to play with yourself. When you start to get tired, you start to lose your focus. And especially this happens in a race because during practice, we have really supportive coaches, we have a really supportive team, and they're always there to sort of cheer you on and support you during practices. But if you're in a singles race, it's you against the other boats. It's you, you have to encourage yourself. And learning how to do that is quite a challenge. These rowers have sage advice for experienced rowers and newcomers alike. Don't get too frustrated with yourself because I'm still pretty new and I remember my first time rowing and I got so frustrated and you just got to stick with it and then you'll pick it up right away. It can sometimes be hard to stay with at first but if you stay with it and you get committed and you work it into your schedule, like, hey, there's, there's tons of opportunities and there's so many different levels of competitive that you can go to. It's difficult at first. You're in this boat, it's tippy, it's hard to stay upright, you probably will flip but after you get comfortable in the boat, it's just so much fun. So stick with it and you'll have a great time. Feel that tug through your shoulders. Crucial timing, communication and teamwork ensure success right here on the water. And the members here at the Delta Rowing Club certainly have mastered those skills. Balance, top speed, and a no-fear attitude are what you need to win the World Hardcourt Bike Polo Championships. Our reporter, Jack Fox, has more. Bike polo was on everyone's mind during this two-day tournament, so we stopped by to find out what it is all about. Oh. Bike polo, for most of us, is just another way to ride our bikes. And it's, you know, it's so much fun. A lot of us haven't played team sports before because cycling is a pretty individual event. So, um, you know, it's a chance to, for me, really, it's a chance to hang out. I have this lovely community of people that I can go visit anywhere in the world, anytime I want, and play bike polo. It's amazing. The real question is, what are the rules, if any at all? It's three on three, and it's a joust for the start. And the simple rules of bike polo is it's a contact sport, so there's three contact rules, bike on bike, body on body, mallet on mallet, no combinations. Um, a, you score to five or to time, which is typically 15 minutes in a tournament, we played at 12. And then uh, if you put your foot down, you have to tap out. And that's just basically taking yourself out of the game, biking to the either half of the court and just tapping on the fence or the net. And uh, when your team scores, you come back to half and wait for the ball or a teammate from the opposing team to cross half. Players come in all shapes and sizes, according to this guy. It gets pretty rough and tumble, especially when you're playing with your friends, you're playing with people you know how their style is. You can, uh, you can get a little rougher with them, and I'm a pretty big guy, about 6'7", 205, so I toss it around on the court a little bit and use that to my advantage whenever I can. Not only is bike polo a sport, it is also an art form, complete with Customized bike mallets. Get a piece of ABS piping, cut it, drill a hole that like is the width of the ski pole, and uh, I get a round file and I just file it down so it fits perfectly, then drill it out for weight. Bam, that's it. 
And in the end, they were all competing for this, the East Van Crown. For a local connection, this is Jack Fox signing off. Thanks, Jack. We'll be back with more local connection from Alder Acres. Local connection will be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Local Connection. Hi, we're at Alder Acres. Behind me, we have two powerful oxen. They make a strong team. Speaking of strong teams, Canucks fans are gearing up for another nail-biting season. Skylar Bear has more. The Canucks are back. We're here at the first preseason opening game where our own Steve Blue returns to Vancouver to take on the Calgary Flames. Local Connection is in the heart of the Canucks home at Rogers Arena to take you to where the action is tonight. So, Canucks going to win tonight? Hopefully. Sure they are. <laughs> Good season. Absolutely. It's a great chance to see the young guns coming yeah. out there, look, you know, trying to get their spot on the team. This is what it's exciting about the pregame. It's been a long summer getting over this game seven loss, but you know, the whole city's pumped, BC's pumped. We're just really excited for tonight. Tell us a little bit about what you're wearing. You've got some, uh, you've got the, the lanyard, and you've got. Uh... I got the lanyard. My purse is Canucks wow. tin, so it's durable. Okay. Got my Kessler jersey and my homemade Canucks fascinator. No, that 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 is very creative. This season we've still got some familiar faces. All of our favorite names: Kessler, Burroughs, Luongo, Schneider, and we've also got some new players who are going to hopefully make the full roster. We'll find out tonight after the preseason game. Who's your favorite player? Luongo. Luongo. Who's uh, yours? Raymond. Raymond. Ryan Kessler. Kessler. My favorite Canuck is Trevor Linden, and always will be. <laughs> My favorite player is Luongo. Kevin Bieksa. Who's your favorite goalie, Luongo or Schneider? I'll pick Luongo. Luongo? Yeah. There's always more than one team playing at the game, and tonight our own Sea of Blue takes on the Calgary Flames. And there's fans here too. We can't leave them out. Let's talk to them and see how they feel about tonight's game. You wearing a Flames jersey, do you feel outnumbered at all? Uh, a little bit, a little bit, but I'm used to it. I've been here for a couple years, so. Do you have hope, hopes for the Flames tonight? I do. I think we're going to kick some butt. Yeah? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> what do you, what, no, what? well, the Canucks aren't fielding their best players, so it's maybe a night for her to cheer a little louder than normal, but we'll see what happens when the season starts. They've been off for like half a year, so. Now, Calgary had a, a longer off season than the, than the Canucks. Do you think they're more ready than the Canucks are? Or? Um, not so much. They're a bit of a new team. They've got new players, so maybe the chemistry is a little different. So we'll, hopefully we'll see tonight. So uh, what if Calgary wins? Do you have to like you have to sing or something? Or? Uh, no, we'll keep no. that between <laughs> the two of us. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> fans are pumped. This is such an exciting night. The preseason opener is drawing so many excited fans and different kinds of fans, and even fans from like Calgary, Edmonton, and Winnipeg. It's just a really great night. It's bringing, really bringing the energy back into Vancouver, um, you know, really welcoming the Canucks back into the season after such a successful season last year. We only had a three month uh, short off season, but you know what? The Canucks are back and ready and energized as they'll ever be. And with the support of all the fans here, I don't think they're gonna let anyone down and they're gonna make it far. So we wish them all the best. Go Canucks, go. Go Canucks, go! Go get them. Go Canucks, go! Go Canucks, go! Go Canucks, go! <laughs> she said, go Canucks, go! 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 In Vancouver, this is Skylar Bear for Local Connection. It's that time in our show when we connect to our local community. Our reporter Dominique Armand finds out what you have to say. Thanks guys, today I'm asking you, what is your favorite thing about the fall season? 
but what I like is the view of the uh, skyline. It's very nice and when the colors change of the trees. We have the four seasons uh, you know, really well defined. Where I'm coming from, you know, it's uh, basically just one season. So uh, yeah, this is beautiful. The orange trees falling. We were just talking about it. That's it. I see that. And 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 the crisp weather. I love it. I guess I'm looking forward to the leaves changing and what the city's like, what the atmosphere is like, and everything. One last shot at summer. Uh, it's the rains haven't quite arrived yet, but uh, that's about it. <laughs> what about you guys? Uh, I like cars. You like, you like the colors? No cars. The cars? <laughs> I guess my favorite thing about the fall is it's not too hot to still keep walking, but it's still nice and dry out here for the sea walk. It's beautiful. beautiful. I mean, it's a lovely city, beautiful sunshine, great watching the float planes come in. Just off to have a pint. <laughs> what, what more do you want? <laughs> All the things in Canada is beautiful, is wonderful. And the best thing, I, I think, is the, the climate, the, the wind, the, 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 the maples, all the things is beautiful. You walk along the seawall with the uh, nice breeze off the ocean, the crisp air. It's fun, it's, it's colorful, it's spectrum. Like, you can see people from all different life, different country and all there. It's fun. Um, I like kicking the leaves. Oh, you like kicking the leaves? Yeah. And what color are the leaves? Fall. Fall? <laughs> yeah. Well, we got some great responses from our friends in Vancouver, but one of my favorite things in the fall is that for three years in a row now, I am the best pumpkin carver amongst my friends. Back to you guys. And what is it that you love about the fall season? Well, that's a wrap here at Elder Acres. Thanks, Albert Anderson, for giving us the lovely tour of the farm. And if there's any stories that you would like to share with us, please feel free to visit our Facebook page or YouTube channel. For Local Connection, I'm Roxana Olteen. And I'm Michael Barry Anderson. Thanks for watching.